Hi, my name is Colleen Anderson, and I will be presenting on George Metesky, the Mad Bomber. The first bomb was planted outside of Consolidated Electric, November 16, 1940. It never went off, but there was a note attached to it stating that the electric company would pay for their dastardly deeds. There were a couple of other bombs like this, which led police to believe that they were just threats. Eventually, a bomb did go off in a telephone booth, causing structural damage, but no injuries. A couple weeks later, a bomb went off in a movie theater, causing a few injuries, as well as structural damage. This led the NYPD to create a task force delegated to catching the Mad Bomber. This task force was created in December of 1956, 16 years after the first bomb was found. The task force was made up of 50 detectives and one psychologist, Dr. James Russell. Dr. Russell created a profile of the potential bomber. He profiled that the bomber was male, unmarried, living with an older female, age 40 to 50, stocky, paranoid, living in Connecticut, and of European immigrant descent. He came to this because most bombers are male. The letters had led him to believe that he was suffering from paranoia. Paranoia victims tend to peak at age 30, and his antics had started 16 years prior, thus leading him to be the age between 40 to 50 years old. He believed he was of stocky build because a report had recently come out stating that 85% of mentally ill patients were of stocky build. He believed him to live in Connecticut because there were postage marks on each letter stating it was from Westchester, Connecticut. And he also thought that he was of European descent because of the language used in his letters as well as the type of bombs were commonly used in Slovak European countries. He also stated that he would potentially be wearing a double breast suit because mentally ill patients tend to care about what they look like. They published this in the paper hoping that he would eventually contact them, in which case he did. He contacted Dr. Brussels himself. He stated that he was doing this because he was injured at work while he worked for the company and was never compensated for his injuries and was ultimately fired. He's still unemployed and is trying to seek compensation from the company which is why he's setting these bombs, for them to pay for their dastardly deeds. Once they found this letter, they, re they looked into it and found George Metesky, living in Westchester, Connecticut. When they picked him up, he matched the description to a T. He was found in a bathrobe, so they asked him to change, in which case he changed into a double breast suit. When they brought him to trial, they charged him with 47 different counts, including attempted murder. Although he was found insane and not competent to stand trial, he was locked in a secure hospital until he could be deemed competent to stand trial or serve out two-thirds of his potential sentence, which was 16 years and 8 months. He served 16 years and 8 months in the secure hospital and was set free, where he lived in Westchester, Connecticut, until he passed away at the age of 90. Profiling seemed to help out a lot in this case but the police still stated that it was because of their hard work and diligence that they eventually found him. They believed that he would have still wrote that letter to Dr. Brussels or even the newspaper stating that he was injured, and from that statement, they were able to track him down. It had nothing to do with the profiling. Profiling actually made it more difficult because there were a lot of people calling in stating that they believed that their neighbor or coworker was acting very different. It made the public hypersensitive to people that fit this description, so they were going on dozens of calls that were going nowhere. They were wasting time and energy because people believed that, like I said, their neighbors and their coworkers were potentially this bomber. Profiling is still used today, and it is still questionable as to if it actually helps find potential perpetrators of crimes. I believe that it does help limit the broad spectrum of who could potentially be doing these crimes but it does definitely create more work for the police investigating the crimes. This was the, first, this was the first case that they used profiling in, and it's still used to this day. Thank you.